next uh, award uh, awarder is Eric Tandok. Um, tonight, uh, we're presenting an award to Pastor Nestor Santiago Herente, who is the senior pastor at Grace United Methodist Church in Long Beach. Born in the Philippines, he studied law, then worked with the National Council of Churches for eight years, participating in development projects in rural areas of the Philippines. He became more committed to peace and humanity projects after he became an assistant pastor with the Mennonites. After arriving in the US, he worked with the Victim Offender Program for Youth in Fresno, where he helped bring victims and offenders together to talk it out and later initiated that program in San Francisco. As a pastor in Bellflower, he promoted the Get on the Bus program, which enabled children to visit their incarcerated parents at Salinas Valley Prison, designating his church as a pickup point. In his role as senior pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church, which houses uh, the meetings of La Bopin, uh, he broke new ground, becoming the first, first ethnic pastor at uh, Grace and he has become an active member of the Long Beach Peace and Justice Community by supporting Labapin, uh, housing the Filipino Migrant Center, and endorsing Asian and Pacific Islanders for LGBT equality. He has also played a major role in hosting vigils and raising money for victims of Typhoon Haiyan, and supporting immigrant rights. Through his leadership and commitment to humanitarian causes, Pastor Nestor has created a welcoming atmosphere for peace and justice in Long Beach. So I'd like to present the Community Ally Award to Pastor Nestor on behalf of Lubavitch. To get an award, to be recognized for my work for peace and justice is, is a bonus, you know. It's just been, I've been doing this as a, as a youth in the Philippines, and I don't, I don't really see extraordinariness of what I do. I just do it. You know, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a person who always wants to push boundaries. And um, this is a community ally uh, award, but I know I have created community foes when I do. Um, uh, example, when we have the peace vigil of with the Immigration uh, Coalition for Immigrant Rights for the undocumented, uh, for the unaccompanied minors from Central America. We received several calls from our neighbors that they, they don't want us to do it. The more I wanted to do it. <laughs> and also, uh, when, I, when I preach on, uh, on Measure N in the pulpit about living wage, I angered one of my older members there, and, um, and I know I, I've done right because I have pushed the boundary. And, and, and for your information, Grace United Methodist Church is historically, historically a Republican church. Um, that's a very conservative church before. And uh, it took them 107 years to, be, to have a person of color pastor. And as a bonus, I'm happy to be gay. So they have a bonus for that. So, uh, so what else can I do? Just, so I, I need to push boundary, right? It's either I keep my mouth shut or keep fighting. Grace United Methodist is the first church uh, which opens the door for GSA to hold a youth summit. So they hold it last month. Uh, it started their tour. Uh, their youth summit, uh, leadership summit tour uh, at Grace United Methodist. You know, the, uh, the Filipino Migrant Center, through them and through Anak Bayan, I'm able to directly and indirectly be involved in, um, in peace and justice uh, issues, whether in the Philippines or here in Long Beach or in the nation. So I am um, I'm just um, practicing my faith, you know, as, as a United Methodist pastor, uh, it's our, we learn in seminary that, uh, particularly from our founder, John Wesley, that personal holiness should be coupled with social holiness. 
That's why what I have done and been doing as a pastor is just part of my calling. So to be recognized for your calling and for the natural, the things that you need to do as a pastor is just amazing. I will be turning 50 next year, 50 years old next year. So you are invited to my, um, to my party on May 9 at Grace United Methodist Church. It will be a fundraising party. And who knows, L LBAPN will be part of the, uh, the institution I would like for people to donate. So it will be, uh, it will be, uh, it, it's an open invitation for all of you. And it's, uh, so thank you so much. And it, this is a good year. This has been a challenging for me personally. I have a lot of challenges in my ministry. Lots of, I have actually uh, uh, thought of quitting my ministry. But, um, But this award will help me rethink about that. So thank you so much. So I'm going to call on Carol Quinlan up here. Carol's uh, one of the major organizers of this event. And uh, she's a staunch union organizer and really been one of the, but she's been just great. So um, she's going to be do the next award. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, we're presenting our Peacemaker of the Year Award um, to a very deserving artist and activist, Lisa Engelbrecht. Um, unfortunately, we are giving this award to her posthumously. She did pass away this year. And uh, we will be giving it to her daughter, Kristen, who will accept it for her. And Kristen was kind enough to send me a bio. And one of the things that Kristen said in that bio was how humble Lisa was. Um, and that's so true because she was an internationally known author and artist and you didn't know that about her. You knew she was a great artist. Um, she did logos for Labapan and for Los Cerritos Wetlands Trust and, and other organizations and she was always happy to lend her talent and I was not aware for quite a long time that you know, she, she was uh, commercially, you know, very sought after. She was really not just our local, you know, artist as a hobby. And so that made me appreciate her even more. Um, she was just such a lovely person. Um, we all miss her greatly. And she gets this award because she did so much and with such grace and always just so happy to help and had so much talent to lend. And, and we just appreciate that so much. And the last thing, I, I have a whole bio of her and, and I wish we could have printed the whole thing, but the last thing that Kristen wrote in this bio was to remember her, take her advice, and do epic shit. Because yeah. that was Lisa. She, was, she did epic shit. And so I'd like to ask Kristen to come up and talk a little more about her wonderful mother that we all loved so much. Well, if, uh, any of you who did know my mom would know that she, um, she would have just totally been laughing at the fact that she got an award. Uh, to say that my mom was humble is actually an understatement. She, uh, she hated recognition of almost any kind. Um, and uh, so as, as um, I don't really know where to start. I'm gonna try and keep it short. Uh, my, one of my earliest memories is of going to a die-in uh, on 2nd Street. Um, it was during the uh, first Iraq War. And my mom always, uh, as well as her many other things, she always had a million things on the table. Um, as well as all of those, she always had, uh, she always had a, She always had a good sense of what was going on outside of our small world in Long Beach. Um, as much as she loved uh, loved this town and knew all of its funny corners, uh, all of its new shops, all of its new restaurants, uh, all of its new artists, um, she also always had her you know her thumb on the tempo of whatever else was going on in the larger world. Uh, and she raised both my brother and I, I think, to uh, to, sh to share that to share that feeling. Um, and 
many of you I, I know from my time working in the Boppin, which was more than a decade ago, uh, actually about 15 years ago, um, which was my mom and I sort of interacted with the Boppin at different at different moments. She sort of got way involved after I left. What was kind of magical about my mom was that um, I, I often have the reaction, uh, not unlike uh, some of the former speakers, of getting sort of so excited that I actually get upset about things, or getting so irritated about the situation at hand that um, I can't quite keep my handle on my language often. Um, and my mother had exactly the opposite reaction. Um, when, uh, when she got agitated about something, where, where other people might get angry, my mom always got nice, That's right? right? That's right. She, it, seriously. Um, and uh, annoyingly nice sometimes. Um, but it also, uh, that, that is a completely different strategy than we sometimes, I think, use in the rest of our activist life. Um, and so I would encourage all of you to put that strategy to use, or at least take a look at it and, and see whether it might be one that works in any given situation. Um, so don't get angry, get nice. Peace. Yeah.